Yeah, thank you. I mean, I'm happy, but most of it, I'm I'm proud uh, for what we achieved because um, when I first came here two years ago, the team was uh, basically second last. So it was a big risk for me to to come here and join uh, the club in that uh, state. But we made it uh, we made it happen. Um, we survived, and then last year it was a difficult year for every single team you know with COVID with the last 10 games we didn't finish the season so it was you know a tough season this one as well with a lot of young players with a change of a manager and all of it but uh, we made it you know we progressed very very well and we won some big games as well on top of it so we made the the, the cup final as well so uh, overall it's a, it's a very positive season. Yeah, how, how how much is it important for you for your legacy to have that important season at Monaco? Because you like you said, it's been tough. You've been unlucky. A lot of circumstances went against you, but this year you can point to you know delivering something very important for the project. Yeah, no, definitely, and individually as well. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm not playing every single game ninety minutes, but you know, as, uh, I feel that uh, every game that I play. Even if it's 45, 30, 40, 60 minutes, you know, I'm, I'm giving a lot to the team. Uh, and uh, that's, that's the most important, you know, to, to, to make yourself be available, uh, feel important in the minutes, you know, that uh, you're involved. To. Because for me, it's not about how many minutes I play anymore, you know. I, I know I cannot play every single, every three days for 90 minutes because uh, I, I would be killing myself anyway and not 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 be able to give my, my my all so for me now to have this role and play the minutes that uh, I am with full energy and, uh, and 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 mentally prepared to give what the team needs at certain moments you know it's uh, it's good it's helping me for the present and I think for the future as well yeah you must still be a little bit hungry as well because like I was looking at like what Cristiano Ronaldo's done and stuff like that, and and just staying at the top—that's the hardest thing. To be a Champions League player at 34, that takes a lot of hunger. Where where is that hunger coming from now? Because you've achieved a lot, you could easily just relax and and let the end of your career fade away. But you're you're not relaxing. You're really pushing yourself, aren't you? I think it's just uh, the way the way you are. I mean, uh, it's all it's all in the brain. I mean, believe me. Um, with uh, Nico Kovac as a manager, if I was relaxed, I, I would not even be playing one minute per game. I mean, physically, the way we train, it's a little bit like, uh, you know, all these uh, new coaches, young coaches, uh, the modern coach, I would say, you know, that you have to be physically at the top of your level. You need um, to perform physically and, and have quality. So it's a little bit of of everything he demands and um, and that's why you know every day in training you need to push because as well here there are so many young players with so much energy they could be running all day up and down so yeah if i'm not i'm at my best uh, then there's no chance for me to play is it as tough as antonio conte because <laughs> we spoke a lot about conte and like this guy this guy changed you <laughs> i feel yeah yeah he made me realize uh, many, many important things that I didn't realize in the past, like training. You know, I was always uh, a starter everywhere I went. And, you know, you don't realize because you play every three days, you don't train a lot. And the older you get, you feel sometimes that the less you need to do. And it's completely the opposite. It's the more you need to do. Uh, to be physically uh, at, the, at the top level because when you're young you don't really need it you know you're fresh and you just it just happens you have naturally a lot of energy but the older you get the more games you have in your legs uh, the more you need to train the more you need to give to, to, to for your body to be able to compete and this is what I'm doing and I'm honest with myself and I'm the first one who I know that I cannot play for different reasons at the the level required 90 minutes every three days but the coach knows very very well that i'm there to give my all in every training and every game that i'm at uh, at the disposal to do so so you know i'm i'm proud of it but at the same time i'm i'm realistic and i know what i can bring to the team which is a lot still 
You remember that photo you took with Olivier Giroud where you like, you, you look absolutely shredded. You look like Ollie's little brother. I don't know if you remember, you posted it on your social media. Yeah, after the uh, Europa League game, I think, yeah. Did that, did, was that like a sort of like, were you trying to show that you, you kind of changed something as well? Like, because I feel like you transformed your body in those, those years as well. Like you, and maybe that's helped you have a few more years in your career. Is that something that's true? You know, that picture, did it show that? And, and have you extended your career by kind of learning that, that way of training? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I mean, it did help me so much the way, you know, uh, I understand training now and the way uh, football is developing and, and, and where you need to be, at which level you need to be, you know, to, to keep performing. And I know that uh, when I started so young and, you know, at 17, you already play so many games and at a very young age, like when I was 30, my body was like uh, of a player. 35 36 and I, I know that I, uh, but uh, you know mentally I wake up every morning and I'm still hungry you know I see all these young players learning and improving and me being part of it and the way they talk to me the way they ask questions the way they allow me to advise them you know this gives me so much pleasure to to go to training every day and compete with them and this is why I was saying before that it makes me even more proud than happy for what we did uh, this year because I know inside it's, it hasn't been that that easy. Tell me about some of these Monaco players you're playing with because I think that we look at the project in England as, as the place that brings amazing young talent now. I think that's what the project's become. Tell me who excites you in the dressing room. Um, it's took many. He's one of the players that a lot of us know. Tell me about some of the players. I mean, I could talk about every single one, to be honest. There's so many and they are all so talented. Uh, some of them, we didn't see much of them because uh, we were in a period where we were winning, winning, winning. And you know, some of them, we were 27 players and not all of them were allowed to, to, to shine, uh, you know. But I'm telling you that there's so many players here that are capable of making it in the future. Um, and yeah, obviously we all know the Badia Shields, the Fofanas, the Chaumenis, the Ops, Golovins, all these type of players that uh, have been performing well in the last uh, year or so. And, uh, you know, I believe soon they will be ready to, to make the, the jump to a, to a top, top uh, team. And uh, hopefully this will happen for them because I know how much they work. I know how much Nico and uh, the club uh, invest in it, uh, especially in time and education, football education uh, with them. So I'm sure we will be having some great stars in the future from, from this team. What interests me about your game is you're like famously the magician. That's what everyone used to call you, um, you know, in Chelsea. you got a magic hat, <laughs> um, you know. <laughs> Has the game changed a little bit, um, you know, from when you came through? Like, is it harder for a player to just show off their technical skills now? Um, and, and, you know, do you think players like you uh, find it harder to come through the system now? I ask, my, I ask myself this question sometimes, and I, I believe it would all depend on the coach that you have. But uh, my answer would be closer to a yes than a no, because... Um, now, coaches, what do they want? They want physical power. They want players that can run a lot, that can put a lot of pressure, that they are aggressive. And then they want the quality. But first of all, if you don't run, if you're not aggressive, if you're not strong, um, it's more difficult nowadays for a young player with just quality to make it. And uh, Having said that, you know, I when I was started at 16 and Arsene Wenger gave me the opportunity, I was very tiny, I was very skinny. But at the same time, I remember I didn't hold back. If I had to make a tackle to Dennis Bergkamp, I, I would do it and I would not have any problem about it, you know. And I think this is one of the things that Arsene always told me that he liked about me, which is this nastiness sometimes that I, I had, you know, in me, which out without being something bad, but you know that uh, he liked the aggressivity that I used to show. And uh, I think I did have that, but at the same time, I agree that my main power, my main ability was the, 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 the technical 
quality that I offer the team. And nowadays, coaches are looking more for the other side of the game before they look for the quality. So it depends, of course, in each coach and their mentalities. But yeah, the modern coach now nowadays goes a, a little bit more the other way. Do you think you would have adapted, say, you know, you broke through in 2003 and I remember you did have that aggressiveness and you could play on the counter-attack as well. You had the had the legs. I remember you and Henri scored a beautiful goal away uh, somewhere um, and, yeah, you did have that. But do you think you would have adapted now? You would have changed if you, if you were breaking through now? And um, who do you think, like, a modern version of you is now? Uh, maybe with a bit more of that um, pressing and, and different style um, embedded in their, in their play? I don't know. I don't know. I think everyone is their own type of player, and I, it's difficult for me now to to single out someone. But yeah, I think I would have adapted. I mean, at the end of the day, we, we we all can improve. We all can do better. But as much as we want, there's always a limit. And physically, you know, as much as I've trained all my career at the very, very, very maximum level, I know that there's always a limit that I cannot reach. Don't ask me to sprint at 35 kilometers per hour because I could be training day and night and I would never achieve it. You know what I mean? But thanks to that, I improved other characteristics of, of my game because, you know, even now, you see, when we do sprints, because we do a lot in this system and this methodology of uh, Nico with his fitness coach, you see all these kids reaching 36, 35, 34 kilometers per hour. Me, my maximum basically is 30, but you know, I need to adapt to other to other circumstances of the game. You know, if I know that they are quicker than me, you need to know how to go around this. And um, and for this reason, always my brain had to readapt uh, throughout my career. But uh, but definitely, it's a it's a way that I like. Is I wouldn't change my style of play for for anything in this life. And and this is I'm sure about it. Yeah, we've had some great moments. And um, what do you think the sort of um, sort of like future of you is? You know, like what what do you want from the rest of your career? You've still got that year at Monaco. Um, how are you How are you approaching the situation? Yeah, no. Well, I have this last year here. Uh, we made Champions League. This could be. This was my dream. You know, to 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 finish playing Champions League, uh, which is where I've been all my life, where I feel that uh, I belong and where I like to be and uh, you know hopefully we made it this year after two two difficult years and um, I'm really excited about it I mean I know that I'm getting older uh, each day but uh, as I said to you before my mentality uh, is the same I know that I as well that I will not be pay, playing every three days 90 minutes like I mentioned before but my role here I think that coach knows me very well he knows my game, he knows my football, and he knows in which situations he can take the best out of me. It's been proven this year many, many, many times when I made the difference from the bench. And, you know, as, as long as this keeps happening, you know, I will feel alive and I'm involved all in uh, with the project of the club. Yeah, definitely. I remember you said that maybe you'd want to play in America, though, or something like that. And, and yeah, it'd be, maybe it'd be cool to see you in Spain. Is there anything like that in your thoughts or is that just too far away right now? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'll be 35 when I finish here and then I will I will make a decision. I will see how my body is, how my body reacts after a tough season, which will be next year for sure, because I think this year we played 44 games. Uh, next year, the minimum... It will be around as well 47, 50 games, which is a long, long season. And uh, let's see, let's see how I finish then. Let's see how I react to that. Let's uh, analyze at the end of the season. But definitely, I'm looking forward to a big season next year and uh, hopefully a, a very successful one. We football fans are selfish. We just want to see you on the pitch for as long as we can. Um, but yeah, Thanks I just for want to. Same for me. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You'll be playing somewhere, even if it's five aside, that's for sure. I'll invite you in London. Um, yeah, but I wanted to ask you, um, you know, with Chelsea as well, um, you know, you must be watching on um, back at your old team and, and kind of happy uh, seeing how well they're doing. What have you made of Thomas Tuchel's impact? Yeah, the impact uh, has been brilliant. I mean... Um... We take nothing away from, from Frank because I think he did very well as well in a very difficult, difficult situation that we sometimes 
don't appreciate or we don't look closely to what he had to go through, you know, um, with many things. Like uh, I left six months before, Gary Kay, he left, David Luiz left, Eden Hazard left. You know, important names, important players in that dressing room. He couldn't sign anyone because they had the, the, the ban. And even though, you know, he, he took some great players uh, from the academy, like Mason Ma, like James, like uh, Tomori, like uh, Tammy, all of these players, uh, Billy Gilmer as well, that he's having his chances slowly. And uh, this is fantastic. I mean, you know, we, we have to appreciate all he's done. And now Tuchel, you know, has has come in and he's, you know, maybe taken the team to another level out of experience, out of uh, whatever you want uh, it to call. But the team has reacted very well. And even though the last few games haven't been the best, you know, I still believe that they, they can do very well uh, on the weekend. Yeah, I mean, we're going to publish this interview after the weekend, but do you think they've got what it takes to stop City in the long run, whatever the result, you know, do you think Chelsea are a club that has everything, you know, to, to, to try and get that, to bridge that gap? Because it's it's what they've been doing ever since you left, pretty much, Seth. They've been trying to get back up there. Oh, but Chelsea, listen, Chelsea is, is a club and I could see it, I could feel it from the outside when I was at uh, Arsenal, when I was at Barcelona, competing against them. You could feel that there was a something special in there you know that it's a club that has this winning mentality uh, and once I went there I felt it firsthand that there was something about it that okay maybe you don't win but you will be competing until the end you will get to finals you will get to semi-finals you know you, you, you you'll be reaching uh, for Premier Leagues and and there is something about the feeling inside inside the club, you know, with the players and with the atmosphere and, and, and everyone surrounding the club, the fans feel it as well that, uh, you know, it's a very successful club. And um, this is why I was so happy that I joined and I I could win so much with them. Yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up with a few last questions now. Um, and uh, yeah, we saw, I saw Eden Hazard playing at Stamford Bridge again. It was beautiful. Um, but... You know, he's taken a lot of harsh criticism as well. How do you sort of feel it? Does it make you sad like it makes me seeing seeing the way he's been treated and, and um, you know, what kind of hopeful message do you have kind of for Eden? Because I think that we both know that he's still an unbelievable player when he gets his body right. Yeah, I mean, of course, I, I was... He knows that I... We spoke uh, recently and... Uh, I wrote, I told him what I feel and um, he knows uh, exactly that he's also been very, very unlucky because he was a player. I don't know, I, I was five years with him uh, and he was never injured. I mean, I could recall from Eden being injured twice and it was uh, something very, very small that recovered very quickly. And for me to see that, it's shocking because you could never expect someone so strong yeah. that you spend so long with him day in, day out, training every day, playing every three days, not getting injured. And then all of a sudden he goes to one of the best clubs in the world as well to compete and to try to reach another level. And this happens. So, of course, it makes me sad because I always said that Eden has the potential to be whatever he wanted to be, you know, to win Champions Leagues, to win Ballon d'Ors. For me, talented, talent-wise, is he's up there with the best. So, um, it's been sad to see. But I still believe that, you know, uh, once these little things go the other way and he stays fit for, for a while, you know, we will see the, the Eden we all know. Yeah, it's um, it, it's a bit shocking to me to see because, you know, the English media is not the best, but the polemics of the Spanish media is just a different level. It's 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 mind blowing. It's it's crazy. I don't know how you live with that, Cesc. That's, you know, in Barcelona, it's it's crazy. Um, yeah. yeah, but it's, it's part of life. You are playing for one of the best clubs in the world. It happened to me as well in Barcelona for the good and for the bad. Yeah. Yeah. Team, I played 12 years there, and uh, when you win, 
is the very very best and when you lose you need to to take it i mean this is part of the job uh, it's part of uh, the football industry and uh, you just have to swallow it and and keep strong and this shows as well the the mentality of each player but uh, yeah this is sometimes it's not also or not everything about the game or you win you lose is about taking criticism as well you know for so many 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 years and being able to just uh, understand why it happens i mean i always at the beginning when i was younger it used to happen to me affect a little bit uh, but then i realized quickly that if they criticize maradona if they criticize Mourinho, if they criticize Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, why would they not criticize me if I play one bad game? And then you start to understand that it's nothing personal. It's nothing about you or about uh, anyone. It's just the polemic or the, the, the spice that brings to, 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 to criticize someone if they're not doing well. And this is always something that you need to take and uh, transform it to a positive vibe to be and try to be better. I think I want to show that what you just said to footballers because I think young footballers it could help them a lot to see this because it's it must be crazy the first time it happens to you but um, yeah I mean we we at goal we had this big interview with Leo uh, you probably saw it um, but we did uh, a year ago and uh, yeah it was it was it was crazy to see him speaking so honestly and openly um, about the situation in Barca how how are you feeling about um, him now because he's he stayed at the top in an incredible season again um, and really helped Barca again. Um, how are you feeling about the situation now? It's coming to the, the contract point, the new president in Barca. How are you feeling about the whole you know, situation around Leo? Well, I'm, I don't know. I'm very happy that Laporta is the president because he's someone with a lot of personality. Uh, he's calm. He knows what he's doing. He's been successful before. He's got the experience. So... I'm very positive that he will bring the club back uh, where it belongs. And regarding Leo, I don't know what he will do. I just hope that uh, he will stay at the club. You know, it's a very personal decision. Uh, let's see how he feels and, uh, and we'll see what happens. But uh, definitely, you know, I would like to, to watch him play uh, football at Barca for, for many more years and, and be successful there because he deserves it after what he's done for the club. Yeah, it would be cool to see him in the Premier League, but I think that you, something special that that connection with Barca is something you know different, isn't it? It's not easy to have this as a footballer. Yeah, my my last question is just um, I know you're going away, so uh, my last question is the Euros. Like, how are you sort of seeing the picture? I know you're working the Euros as a pundit, so I can't wait to see that. But um, how are you seeing the picture of all the different teams and and particularly with Spain with their group, which is quite young actually and, and quite inexperienced. How are you feeling about their chances against the likes of England, France and Portugal? Yeah, it's not easy. It will not be easy, but uh, no competition at the, at the top, top, top level uh, as it is, you know, it's going to be simple. So, you know, they just have to compete. It's a very young team as well, you know. Uh, they've proven before that they can qualify. They, can, they played some good games as well. And uh, we're just here to to support them. I mean, I don't like it when we start complaining before the tournament starts. I mean, I have the experience. In 2008, uh, I was 21, I think. And then there was like the Silvas, uh, Iniestas. Uh, we were coming through, you know, and everyone was doubting us a little bit because uh, Raul was not called up, Salgado, Alvelda. Canizares, all these uh, players that uh, they put a little bit on the side to give a space for for us young players and we ended up winning the tournament and then I don't think I need to repeat what, what happened after but uh, yeah, it's all about giving opportunities you know, Luis Enrique is a player, uh, ex-player and a coach with a lot of uh, personality, with good ideas and you know, he, he will not want to throw stones uh, on top of himself, you know, he, he will want to do the best and he believes this is the best way and we need to support it and go along with it and we'll be behind the team and uh, hopefully we, we can do well. Yeah, your Spain team bullied the world of football, man. I was, I was scared, you know, the way you suffocated teams with possession. That was, 
That was crazy. But no, thanks for your time. Um, I'll let you get off. And uh, yeah, it's great that I got squeezed in the interview just before your holiday as well. I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, <laughs> you've given me a...